Last Saturday night was our season opener at PKRA for the first race of our summer season. The shifters were in the house. They came out in force. Well, it's kind of a force for our track. If I remember right, we had 11 shifters take to the uh, green flag for two heat races. Now, normally we do um, qualifying one heat and do a main. This particular race, we did a warm up and then we did pill draw and then we did invert and then we did a second heat and we never got off to the main event because of uh, an incident that happened on track. But during the shifter race, we had an even bigger incident. We have 11 guys take to the uh, track for the second heat race and only I think four or five, maybe six finished. Within the first five seconds of the race, four or five racers was completely out of the race. And we're not even sure if they were even gonna be able to start the race. But uh, like I said, we had an incident at the track which we weren't able to run the main event for several of the classes. So I'm gonna show you what happened to one of the go-karts that was racing in the shifter class. Check it out. This was one of the go-karts racing in the shifter class at PKRA last Saturday night. 285. It was uh, on April 24th, number 11, racing an Intrepid. And as we get around to the motor, well, the tire should not be up into the exhaust. And I don't believe the axle should be bent that bad. So today we're going to show you how to pull the axle out, as Curtis at Innovative Karting tells us correctly. Last time I pulled out an axle, I actually had to bring it out. The, uh, what I would call the driver's side of the go-kart because it was so bent on this side, it wouldn't go out that side. Well, this one's bent on the other side. And since it's an Intrepid, so he's a fellow Intrepid racer, I told Curtis that I'd be more than happy to help out and pull this axle out and do a video at the same time. So we're gonna get this in the shop and we're gonna show you what it takes to pull this axle out of this shifter cart. Tools you're gonna need for this job you're gonna need some beta T-handles. We've got every imaginable tool torque wrench. We've got screwdrivers, Phillips. Up here we got all of our different uh, sprockets for the back, and then we've got all of our tools up on top. Impact, Phillips, standard. So we've pretty much got everything in the toolbox where we can disassemble here at a shop, we can disassemble in the field. Everything needs to fit in a three drawer box. So when you disassemble the uh, rear of the cart to take the axle out, first thing you're gonna do is take off the tires, the wheels on both sides. Then start taking off the axle set screws. I'm trying to loosen up everything. We're gonna take the bolts, which they're stuck in this position. It could be the fact that it's still, the motor is still in gear. So we're not sure about that yet. I really haven't examined everything. We'll take off the chain guard, uh, but we're just gonna start removing everything off this go-kart. Shouldn't take longer than probably five, 10 minutes. Okay, first things first, start taking the nuts. Since we're right here, we're gonna take this hub apart. We'll take this hub off. Now I'm going to show you something that's really cool about an Intrepid. I can't speak for other carting, but this is kind of cool. Now watch. Okay. On an Intrepid, you have this bolt. So when you tighten up the bolt, it tightens down on the axle, of course. Well, when you loosen the bolt, the edge of this hits on this right here, it'll spread this apart, which allows it to come off the axle a whole lot easier. I think this is a cool feature about an Intrepid. See, it's real loose right here, but the minute it hits right there, what it does is when you turn it, it just spreads this part of this crack right here, spreads that apart, makes it easier to take off. I really like that. Well, we'll go ahead and take off the other side too. Hey, 
and it really wrenched on there. Might not be able to get it off till I take off the uh, side pod. Yeah, I'm gonna probably have to take the side pod off also. Now, underneath each side pod, in front of the axle is a bolt. Pull the bolt out and then the side pad will slide out. Now there's only a bolt in the back one. Some people will put the bolt in the front one also. This one, I believe it only has it in the back one. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. It's usually just a 10 millimeter. Yeah, I can feel the pressure pushing down on it. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on this. Then what you're gonna do is just take a rubber mallet and hit it till it pops out of there. There we go. Now we're able to get the tire off. Pretty simple. Look at that indent in that tire. Pretty wild. Now that we got the tire and wheel off, Get it out of here. Now the next thing I'm going to take off, only because it's in my way, I'm going to take off this chain guard right here. I'll open it up. This is where a good ratchet wrench comes in handy. And it just makes taking it off so much faster. So my suggestion is if you don't have one, go out and get one. They're not expensive, if I remember right. I bought this one at a, um, uh, I think I bought it at a Home Depot. I'll put a link down to my in my description down below where you can get these. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend getting one. It just makes taking off nuts and bolts so much faster. Now what I do usually when I'm taking stuff apart before I get to the cleaning aspect of it, I always put the, the washers and the nuts, I put everything back on it, and I can just throw it on the floor and then I don't care. Just so that I know where everything's at. So next we'll take this off. So next we'll remove the sprocket. On the back side of the sprocket, you have two bolts on one side that you take off with the D handle. And over here you have a 10 mil. Just loosen up that 10 mil. And then you'll take your T handle and there's a little set screw right here. The set screw holds in your axle keeper, is what I call it. So your key, basically. So you want to unloose, unloosen that so that your key and your sprocket will slide back and forth. And that way we can take it off. I'm probably going to take the chain off and pull the master link out of that also. Here's the T-handle just like that and just back it off a couple turns okay I now have the motor in neutral watch right here on the frame when I turn the axle down here look at this frame tweak back and forth this axle is bent to crap but my dad was a TV repairman and he has this awesome set of tools he left me I think we can fix it so let's move on. I think we can fix it though. A little bit of JB weld and we're gonna be ready to go. So now nah, this ain't that bad. We'll pop this axle out, pop a new one, slide a new one in and he'll be ready to race next week. Once you get to this point, you've got your tires and wheels off. You've got your chain guard off. You have loosened your set screw for the sprocket keeper you've loosened the uh, bolts on the sprocket we're now going to start taking out the axle set screws we're going to take out the two set screws that uh, hold on the rotor we're going to take out the two bolts that hold the uh, sprocket on we're going to take out the other two uh, set screws that are on the other bearing so what we're trying to do is get it all nice and loose so that we can just slide the axle out and that'll go pretty quick okay on each bearing there are three 
set screws. So we're gonna, I take them all the way out. Some people do, some people don't. I don't care what other people do. I take them all the way out. That way I know I've taken them out. I don't have to worry about them falling on the ground, getting kicked underneath the table, um, put someplace else. It's just something I've always done. I'm surprised that this axle did not move because these set screws were not in very tight. I was just told that a professional was the one that put these set screws in. He shall be name, remain nameless. And now we're on the uh, where the vent side is. And it's not too hard to do this, as you can tell. Oh, dropped one. So, okay, once we got these done, we'll take the sprocket off. Okay, next we're going to loosen the brake rotor. This is pretty simple. Just unscrew it a little bit, a couple turns, just so that you're going to make it so it's free. After this, we're, as we're just moving across. So we're going to take this, we're going to slide this over. Next, we're going to take out the master link out of the chain. We'll take the sprocket off, and then we're going to take out these three bolts on this side and the three bolts on the other side. We want this bearing to be very free because this axle is really tweaked in there. So, pretty simple. Whenever you're working with a master link on a shifter cart, you always want to make sure the horseshoe goes forward. If you put it on the other side and the horseshoe is in the back, it could catch on something, it could knock that clip off. So you always want the clip up front so that the master link part starts out and goes that way. Okay, we never put the master link on the other side toward the bearing. And the reason for this is it's really tough to get it off. Pretty simple to get the master link off. I just use a pair of needle nose. Boom, pops right off just like that. Sometimes I do have to go search for them because they do pop. Once you got the uh, chain off, now we're going to take the sprocket off. The sprocket's pretty simple. This, because it always has oil on the chain, these are usually really simple to get off. They're never frozen or anything like that. You just back them off. Just like so. Like that. Take that one off just like Last thing we're going to do on this side is we're going to unloosen these six bolts. And once we get that off, then we can start sliding the uh, axle out. Now, if we ever put this together, it really doesn't make anything very tight. So we're going to get a half inch or a 14 half inch and pull those out. So much easier. Okay, we're going to kind of do a recap. We've taken the tire and wheel off. We've taken off the axle set screws. We have loosened the two screws that hold the rotor right here. We've taken the sprocket off. We've taken the chain guard off. We have taken out all three bolts that hold this bearing in place. We've taken this tire and wheel off, and we've taken off these three set screws. So right now, the only thing we got to do is usually I'll take a screwdriver and I'll wedge it in here on top and bottom. It'll spread this apart a little bit. And I have a special tool that I hook to right here and we'll slide the axle out that way. Pretty simple. Now, I have one of these handy dandy little items. It's called an axle removal tool. It's got a beveled edge right here that's been machined down that is the same size as the inside of a 50 millimeter axle. That way you don't damage it. You can put it up to one side, you hit it with a mallet right here, and it knocks it all the way out. Strongly recommend getting one of these. Your friends at Innovative Karting have these. If I'm not mistaken, they're approximately 30 bucks, $35. Talk to your friend Curtis. Say, hey Curtis, and ask for the axle removal tool. Now this is pretty simple. I just take the screwdriver. I make sure that my bolt is backed out far enough to where I can just take this, put it right in there. I hit it a couple times. As you see, this is already moving. I can now take I'm not worried about ruining this axle because it's a hunk of crap anyway. Oop, screwdriver came out.
but it's going to take a little work, a little finesse. Take your time. Now, once the axle slides over so far, the keeper, the axle keeper for the rotor will slide out also. So. Okay, now, this is where the cool tool comes in, because now I have the axle past the bearing a little bit because of my last hit. So this will slide into the, ins the inside of the bearing, and then I can tap it, and as you see, it just pushes it right out. It just doesn't get any easier than that. Now, if you look right here, this is already coming all the way through. So it's, it doesn't even need to be done anymore. Without a doubt, the axle, I just gotta hit the axle a couple more times and it'll be past the rotor. There we go. Like so. The reason why I like doing it this way is I'm doing everything by myself. So once I get to this part, I can take this, I pull this out, I can let it sit in the bearing. Now I've got the rotor in my hand. I don't want the rotor to drop on the ground. I don't want to damage this. Okay, pretty simple. Now, if all goes well, I might be able to slide this thing all the way out. And it's all the way out. Look at that bend. Look at that. I think it can be fixed. This is a nice trophy for the wall. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean this baby up and we'll get the new axle and we'll put it in place. Now that you have the axle removed, you've cleaned up all three bearing areas, cleaned the frame, Great time to start cleaning because you can get into all the little nooks and crannies. You can get everything cleaned. I use an air gun. I use simple green, um, just a rag, and I just wipe it all down. And now we're going to do it in reverse. You're going to take the axle. You're going to start at this side, and you'll push it all the way through. It takes a little bit of time. I'll show you how I go about doing it step by step. Now, there's two ways to put this axle in, the right way and the wrong way. You're going to have an axle keeper here. You're gonna have one here for the brake. You're gonna have one here for the sprocket. Now, if it's a tag cart, you're gonna have the sprocket on the outside and then one here for the other hub. So, you got one. Here's where the one uh, axle keeper goes. Here's the second one, which we are not using. Here's the one for this uh, particular application that goes to the uh, sprocket right here. Here's for the brake, where's the brake? There's the brake one and here's the other. So this is the right way to put in the axle. Make sure you push it in the right way. I myself have done it wrong before, and it really sucks, because then you gotta take it apart. Wipe this down really nice and clean, and get it ready to go in. You're gonna start at this side, you're gonna push it in. When you get to about here, you put your rotor in. You gotta make sure you put your keeper in the axle. Otherwise, you gotta take half of it apart. Pretty simple. And we'll go ahead. With the axle still resting on the frame, I always grab onto it. I go through the first bearing. And just take your time. It will slide in just like you saw me slide it out at the end. Okay, now you're going to have to lift up the bearing just a little bit to get it to go through, but it will go through. Make sure you don't pinch your fingers. There we go. And it just slides. You're going to get it so far, I'm going to slide this over a little bit to where we can put the rotor in place and then slide it the rest of the way in. Pretty simple for the most part. Okay, where's the rotor? Slide the rotor in where it needs to go, and we'll just slide the axle right up to it. And then we'll take our screwdriver, we'll spread this apart a little bit, and it'll slide the rest of the way in. We now have our screwdriver in place. It spreads it out just a little bit, and you don't have to do too much to it. Okay. It should go right into place. Nope, I'm not there yet. It 
stuff when you get right here so you can put your axle keeper in place. For those of you that don't know, this is what an axle keeper looks like. Slide it right in the hole. Make sure it's in place. Snap it down and then just line it up. Just like that. You know, it really sucks when you're doing a video, you're trying to do your best, you got somebody on the other side of the shop making a bunch of noise. It doesn't matter that he owns the shop. Okay, once you have the axle in place, the next thing you gotta do is make sure you have the same amount of distance on each side. So I normally will measure right from the axle or the frame where the bearings are connected to the edge of the axle. Other people might do it differently, but I always go with that. I assume that when they build the frames, they do it on a frame jig, everything's straight. So that's just kind of the way I do it. So I measure right from this face on the inside right here to the tip of the axle. And this one comes out to about seven and 15 sixteenths on both sides. Take your time with this. Now, I was just told that this is a European go-kart and you should measure in metrics. I was also told a measurement is a measurement. There again, I measure from the flange all the way to the tip of the axle on each side. So since my measuring tape in my toolbox is in inches, that is what I'm doing. Now, just because I'm measuring at seven and 15 sixteenths doesn't mean your axle is gonna be the same. You could have a shorter axle, you could have a longer axle, but for this video, for the purposes of what I'm doing to make it even, this is what I have. Okay, once you got your axle in, you're going to put in your axle retraining, retaining set screws. They've also been referred to as grub screws. They've also be, been referred to, what else? Can't think of anything else. Anyways, you're going to put in, there's three on each axle. So you're going to set all those in place. Okay, pretty simple. Don't go crazy tightening them and no gorilla hands today. Just make them snug. We'll do the gorilla hands later. Now that you have all the axle retaining set screws in place, you got, like I said, you got three on this bearing and then you'll have three on this outer bearing. We do not put any on the inner bearing. Okay, next you're gonna line up the center of the rotor with the center of the caliper. Pretty simple, there's an indent exactly where you want to use it as a reference and just get it in the center. And then there's two set screws and you'll tighten those up. Pretty simple. Use your T-handle. Now, these are your brakes. I would suggest getting them fairly tight. My opinion, you are allowed to have grill hands for this one. Once you got your two set screws for the brake rotor all tightened, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna tighten up all three of the uh, bolts on each side of the bearing. Pretty simple. Okay, once you got all the bolts in the uh, bearing all tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in our hubs. Make sure you get the right keepers, they slide in place. Get them down. And like I showed you guys before, I really like the Intrepid because I back it out, it spreads it apart just a little bit and it'll slide on with ease. And then we can measure it. And we're just gonna kind of tap them on for right now because that's all we need right there. Just good enough just to show you show you how I do this. Now I'm not going to put on the uh, sprocket because we're going with a different motor. The guy that owns this particular go-kart is trading in the Honda for what's called a rock shifter. So we're going to go ahead and remove the Honda and remove all that. We're going to clean up this area and when the rock shifter comes in we're going to install the rock shifter on it. We'll probably do that in another episode. So today we just showed you how to put in an axle. Pretty much all go-karts are the same. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Race Bomb TV. 
as we showed you how to remove and replace an axle on the back of your go-kart in our ne next episode we're going to without a doubt unless it gets done before i get a chance we're going to remove the honda and we're going to install the rock shifter we'll show you how we go about doing that and until then i'll see you guys at the races have a great day everybody